Hello, welcome back to my channel. Um, today's video is going to be a very uh, science heavy sort of video. Um, I had a few requests uh, a little while back to sort of bring some more science into my, my skincare and cosmetic videos and I mean of course science is my thing, you know, um, human biology, genetics, all that kind of thing. So yeah, um, today's video is one addressing a particular peptide that's been getting a lot of attention recently because of some uh, research that came out. There are some pros and cons, some good and some bad to this one, and I really wanted to get into that for you guys. The peptide in question is called um, Argiraline, and its proper name is Acetylhexapeptide 8. Um, doesn't quite sound as zingy, does it? Uh, this is a peptide that's synthetic. Um, it's developed by a Barcelona-based company called Lipitec or Lipitec, I guess depending on when you're on where you're from. Um, it's a synthetic peptide that mimics for the, the science majors watching this, it mimics the end terminal end of the SNAP25 protein. What that means for you know the person using it is basically uh, it inhibits um, muscle contraction. It's not a muscle relaxant. Uh, that would be one that you know like actually further relaxes your muscles. This one just prevents them from contracting. Of course, inhibiting muscle contraction is how it claims to um, prevent future wrinkle formation and reduce the um, distinct visibility, I guess, of wrinkles that you already have. This is a principle that makes total sense. It's the same way that things like Botox work. Um, but the idea of something that you can apply topically and have it absorbed to those deeper layers um, that's something that's got people quite excited and, you know, it, understandably, I mean, you know, if you could forego the needle and all of the side effects that come with something like Botox, obviously that is something that is worth looking into. Unfortunately, this is where we get into the, um, the, the sticky details with this particular peptide. Peptides are actually quite large molecules. Um, and it is very difficult to get them through the skin. Contrary to popular belief, your skin is actually very, very, very difficult um, to get things through. It doesn't just absorb anything you put on it. Um, your, your skin is part of what's called the innate immune system. It's, you know, the, the parts of your immune system that you're born with. It's there to keep things out, and it's incredibly good at that. There is an entire field of science dedicated to how the hell do we get things through the skin. <laughs> so, yeah, not easy. Particularly when you're dealing with, as I said, large molecules like peptides. Um, a peptide is a string of amino acids. Um, there are 20 amino acids in total. Some amino acids we can synthesize in our own bodies, um, some we have to get through our diet. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a very uh, well worked out system. Thank you, evolution. Uh, given that we have 20 amino acids to work with, the number of peptides that can be developed in labs, even just in skincare, is phenomenal. I mean, like, how many different ways can you combine, you know, 20 different amino acids? It's, it's incredible to think about, and the possibilities are phenomenal. That sticking point is just how do we get it through the skin? Um, unfortunately, the research on Argiraline showed that an absolutely minuscule amount got through, unfortunately. Um, the very top layer of your skin is called the stratum corneum, and that's the part that's the most difficult to penetrate. And unfortunately, less than 1% um, of the uh, acetylhexapeptide 8 got through the stratum corneum. Um, in uh, research that they did on cadaver skin, so, you know, skin taken from the bodies of people who donated their bodies to scientific research, um, and also the skin of live um, hairless guinea pigs, because th their skin is very similar to ours for, for research purposes, so you know, they're, they're a very um, good candidate to, to research this kind of thing. So yeah, less than 1%, that's um, really not promising. Less and less and less, um, you know, of that got deeper and deeper through your skin. And uh, I will put um, an image on the screen now showing you just how many layers it would have to get through in order to get to the muscle below your skin that, it, you know, is the only place it's going to work. Um, yeah, getting to that subcutaneous muscle tissue is quite a feat. Most of the, uh, the peptides used in skincare only have to get to the dermis because, um, yeah, the, the dermis is where, you know, things like collagen fibers are, you know, produced and, and that sort of thing. And uh, like a lot of the, um, the nutrients that support your skin and its function and its integrity, um, yeah, they're, they're, you know, uh, produced and like do their thing, I guess. Um, yeah, in, in the, the dermal layer of your skin. It's a very thick layer, it's, it's where all the, all the little capillaries, blood vessels, that sort of thing are. And then below that, you've got your subcutaneous um, tissues that sort of anchor your 
dermis to the subcutaneous muscle. So like that's even further that it's got to get through. And it's just, we just don't have delivery systems at the moment that can get it there. We do know that um, the higher the water content in an argireline formulation, um, the deeper it can penetrate, but it's still just not going to get there. I mean, you know, this is what the, the research is saying, the independent research, that is. Um, yeah, there's been a decent amount of research uh, paid for by Lipitec or Lipitec um, that makes some pretty phenomenal, miraculous claims that just aren't backed up by independent research. Most people do not realize just how much research and results can be manipulated when it comes to scientific studies. Just because a study is published, you know, in a, a journal does not mean that it's reliable. And a big part of my degree has been learning how to differentiate between good and bad research. I've done two units on it so far, two entire units dedicated just to that. So it's, it's a big problem, especially in terms of like the research that companies pay for in order to make their products look good. And that's the problem that we've got here with Argireline. The independent research just doesn't reflect what they're claiming their research does. So personally, I'm, I'm very skeptical about this stuff. If it could penetrate into the subcutaneous muscle, then it would work, but you wouldn't be able to move your face normally. Um, we'd see those effects, and I'm just not experiencing that. Um, yeah. I've been uh, testing out the Ordinary's 10% um, Argireline solution, this one here, uh, for a few weeks now, and I'm not seeing anything, you know, it, it, no change at all. I, I have some pretty um, significant creasing around my eyes. Um, I have some forehead lines that I've cleverly disguised with a port filling primer. Um, yeah, like th there's plenty for this stuff to work on if it was going to work, and it's just not. Um, my muscle movement is as uh, vivid and exaggerated as it always is. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just not noticing any difference at all. And of course, um, the research paid for by Lipitec claims that you would see results within three weeks. That's how long I've been using this, and I'm not seeing any results at all. Some of their claims include things like a 30% reduction in um, the, the visibleness, I guess, of fine lines. Uh, no, mine are just the same. So yeah, I, I, I really don't recommend this particular peptide, at least until there is a proper delivery system for it, and even then there are safety issues because you're talking about a neuropeptide. It, it works on the way your muscles contract. What if it accumulates in the tissues? We don't know. There is no long-term research on this because it's such a new uh, synthetic compound. So yeah, it, even um, when a proper delivery system is developed, and I'm sure it will be, I mean, these kinds of advances are not far off. They're, they're not you know, far-fetched by any means. Um, I would advise caution with this one, just because of its its bioactivity is pretty intense. Um, by that I mean it, it's it's its actual ability to inhibit the way your muscles contract is very real. As I said, the reason that it doesn't work as a, you know a topical um, skincare formula, I guess, is just because we don't have a way to deliver it to the subcutaneous muscle tissue yet. There is uh, another side to um, the, the, the research into you know, Argireline that seems to show that it has some effect on collagen synthesis, uh, particularly collagen 1. Collagen 1 makes up about 75% of um, the collagen fibers in your dermal layer of your skin. So when you hear um, you know, skincare brands talk about how they're, they're boosting collagen in your skin, that's what they're talking about, collagen 1. Unfortunately for people like me with um, Ehlers-Danlos syndromes, and there is a, a group of them, some of them uh, involve collagen 1, and we have faulty collagen. So for someone like me, increasing the amount of faulty collagen in my skin may not be a good thing. Um, I'd also advise people with osteogenesis imperfecta to be very cautious of things like this, um, because that's another one that involves collagen 1, um, particularly the genes COL1A1 and COL1A2. Um, they code for two chains of the collagen 1 protein. So that, that, that's a pretty big impact, you know, on, on um, yeah, your, your collagen 1. That, that's why um, osteogenesis imperfecta is such a devastating disease to have, that it affects so many different parts of the body. So, yeah, uh, if you're in either of those categories, please be wary of 
Um, anything that, that claims it's going to interfere with your collagen synthesis, um, you know, boost your collagen production, that sort of thing. As I said, boosting the production of collagen that is faulty may not necessarily have good outcomes for you. There is no research in this area that I was able to find. And I, I search pretty extensively, you know, like this is an area that is of great interest to me because I have an Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, <laughs> you know, like collagen research is something that I try to stay on top of, just, you know, out of interest. And yeah, I, I haven't found uh, any research in, um, you know, collagen boosting topical treatments or, or even, you know, quite invasive therapies um, and their, their impact on people with faulty collagen. Uh, despite the fact that we're not particularly rare, you know, there are a lot of collagen disorders out there. So to me, that that's another reason to tread carefully with anything that's this um, intense, I guess, in, in its potential to, to act on, you know, th the way your body works. However, if you do want to check this product out for yourself, um, the one from The Ordinary is probably among the safest you could try because it, it is the only active ingredient in the product and the entire formulation is designed to deliver that active ingredient. It contains 10% uh, argireline, which is the percentage recommended by Lipitec to have a, a beneficial effect. Though again, as I said, their, their research is highly questionable. So, you know, I'd, I'd say take that with a, a large grain of salt. However, one thing I do love about The Ordinary's range is they tell you, you know, exactly what to expect from each product. So. For example, this one is uh, free of alcohol, oil, silicone, nuts, uh, gluten, it's completely vegan and all of their products are cruelty free. So yeah, if, if you do want to check it out, I would recommend going with this one, but overall I don't recommend Argireline in its current form with the delivery systems that are currently available. So yeah, that brings us to the end of this um, little science fest. Um, thank you so much for watching and please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. Uh, and hit that notification bell so that you get notified of my future videos. I will definitely be bringing more science into my videos. I think that's, um, you know, uh, something that people are interested in, which is pretty cool to someone who's of science, like as science obsessed as I am. It's, it's fun to get to share what I'm so interested in. If there are any other um, particular actives that you are interested in me doing a video on, please let me know in the comment section. Um, one that I'm particularly interested in researching is Matrixel. Um, there's a lot of hype around that one at the moment. And of course, The Ordinary has their own Matrixel formulation, so it's, it's certainly affordable and easy for me to get hold of if I should like to try it out. So yeah, um, thank you so much for watching. Keep on being your awesome, gorgeous, chronically fabulous selves. And I shall see you guys in my next video next week. I'm back on schedule now, I promise. <laughs>